on and back. Yes. Yeah. Ma'am, don't do that. Please. Please. A terrible person. Stop. The clip you just saw is courtesy of Created Equal Films. The footage pretty much speaks for itself. Due to the graphic language used throughout, I had to clip the video quite a bit. It features a young college woman who, as a member of an unequivocally privileged elite, she saw a political opinion that dissented from her own and was so offended by it that she was driven to rage, assaulting the activist expressing the opinion. And what was the opinion that was so dangerous? What was the opinion that impacted her in such a way that it tickled that pl place of mental anguish and or immaturity? Or, in my book, what was the opinion that set off the demon that whispers into her ear? The activists were thought criminals of the very worst sort. They were those vile creatures known as pro-life activists. How very dare they oppose the killing of unborn children? The woman would end up getting charged with misdemeanor assault for the attack you just witnessed. This incident is a small part of a growing problem we see in the U.S. and in the West broadly. That is, violence being resorted to as a first response to political disagreement, and that violence is typically coming from one side of the political spectrum for the most part. Given that reproductive medicine, to use the leftist vile euphemism, is intrinsically violent, this shouldn't be surprising in the slightest. The fact that violence is the go-to response first, instead of reason debate, shouldn't surprise anyone either, given the political climate in Western countries. And note that this happened on a university campus. You would be hard-pressed to find a more anti-Logos environment than a university. Reason is assaulted on a daily basis at colleges, with the goal to have an emotionally unstable student population. That may sound ridiculous, but many professors now openly call themselves academic activists, and they have expressed the goal of waking their students up to the social justice issues of the day and turning out as many activists as humanly possible. I'm frankly surprised that this video was only one student assaulting another and not of an angry mob confronting these vile pro-lifers. But thankfully, for the safety of the activists, it was only one relatively weak woman who lost her mind and attacked that activist. Hopefully her relatively light punishment for a misdemeanor assault will remind her that the real world doesn't tolerate such activity. This next clip you may have heard about. It features an elected official, Brian Sims, a state representative in Pennsylvania, bullying a Catholic grandmother in front of a Planned Parenthood. She had a few of her minor grandkids with her. Their crime? Praying the rosary in front of a Planned Parenthood. Again, how very dare they? Listen to what he says. This is very rich if you know anything about the history of Planned Parenthood. This clip's a little longer than the previous one. A Planned Parenthood shaming people for something that they have a constitutional right to do. Huh? Huh? If you hear about the children, you can pray at home for children. It's probably the same place that you could feed a child, but you're not. Instead, you're out here shaming people for something that they have a constitutional right to do. Who would have thought that an old white lady would be out in front of a Planned Parenthood telling people what's right for their bodies? Shame on you. Shame on you for hiding your face at the same time that you're shaming other people. Again, the same laws that protect me protect you, and, and that's okay. You're allowed to be out here. That doesn't mean that you have a moral right to be out here. Shame on you. What you're doing here is disgusting. This is wrong. You have no business being out here. Instead of you're dragging people for their constitutional rights, shame on you. Shame on you. The amount of mental gymnastics it must take to think that you have a right to tell a woman what's right for her body, and yet you will support a faith that has protested, that has, that has molested children across the planet. Shame on you. This is what broken morality looks like. This is what broken values look like. This is how they show up in front of our Planned Parenthoods. This is what they're doing. If you can't tell, this is a place that deserves your support. Planned Parenthood of Southeastern Pennsylvania. They have to deal with people like this every single day. They deal with people out here every single day telling others what's right for their bodies. But we're not going to let them get away with it. Absolutely not. No, ma'am. Don't, don't hide. Don't hide. You're publicly protesting women coming to a Planned Parenthood. It's something they have a right to do. Don't hide from it. Don't hide from it. Have the courage of your broken convictions if this is what you're going to do. Everyone, this is what they deserve and this is what they need. Every single time any of us walk by something like this, we're letting them win. We're letting them think that they are right and we know better. 
These people have no business telling anybody else what's right for their body. They have no business telling people of color what they think about what they do with their families, with their own family planning. This is disgusting. This isn't Christianity. This isn't love. This isn't support. This isn't kindness. This is the hiding, shameful face of those that judge at Planned Parenthood. And it's disgusting. I can't even imagine actually believing that opposing an organization whose founder was a white woman who wanted to exterminate black and Catholic babies is somehow racist. But that's the world we live in. It's clown world on steroids. Margaret Sanger is the woman who literally visited Nazi Germany prior to the war and gave talks on eugenics. You can't make this stuff up, yet it is now anti-white supremacy to support organizations that kill tons of black and brown babies in America and abroad today. Not that killing any baby is okay. I just find the logic behind this remarkable. Even more remarkable is that Representative Sims here is an out and proud homosexual who rather boldly flaunts his so-called lifestyle. But it gets better, because Sims on camera offered a $100 bounty for this old lady to get doxxed. If you're not familiar with doxing, it's the reprehensible practice of finding out the personal details of people, like their addresses, their employer, banking institution, that kind of thing, and making it public so that stunning and brave activists can then harass people at home, call employers so that the employee can get fired, and even in some cases, the harassment of financial institutions so that people lose banking access. There have been cases of people who have been doxxed and then get it, gotten assaulted by our moral betters for having the wrong opinions. For some reason, doxing is still legal, but hopefully that will change in the near future. Calling for a person to be doxxed is bad enough, but it comes from an elected rep representative makes it all the more worse. The authoritarian bent of our betters on the secular left is deeply disturbing, but not all that surprising. For an elected representative, this should be unthinkable behavior, but the world is spiraling out of control. Having rejected Christ, the world has lost its moorings. This quote from Sims sums up the per situation perfectly. Bring it on, Bible bullies. You are bigots, sexists, and misogynists, and I see right through your fake morals and your broken values. Yes, an elected official just insulted most of America's Christians in one tirade, and you know that he will most certainly not be punished for this now, and most likely his opponent in the next election will be too much of a coward to use this against him. Most people today, regardless of their politics, are sensible enough to find this behavior reprehensible, but this story will probably get memory hold by the time he is up for re-election. There is a narrative that so-called right-wingers are the real violent ones, that so-called conservatives are the ones society needs to be afraid of. It's, non it's a nonsense claim, but that's the world we live in now. Given that Sims is a lawmaker in Pennsylvania, if the state were to move in the direction of punishing the Catholic Church legally for the sex abuse cover-up committed by the bishops, you know that he'd most certainly vote in favor of any action that punished such an oppressive organization that hates women and homosexuals like the Church does. You could hear in his voice in his tirade. He might even sponsor the bill. I suppose we shouldn't expect any better of people who defend the murder of children or think that that the waste extraction tract is a sex organ, but these are the people in control of the culture. They have all the power. We don't. And it's evident in the apology issued by Brian Sims in the aftermath, where he only apologized to Planned Parenthood for violating their non-confrontation policy. Evil old ladies with rosaries deserve no apologies, nor should we expect any. The violence is ramping up in society at large, and Catholics will be on the receiving end of it. It's a fact of life, one that our blessed Lord warned us about during his earthly ministry. If that woman is doxxed, and if something horrible happens to her, or the children with her, will Sims be held responsible? If you're in Pennsylvania, I have an idea for you. Contact the majority leader of the state legislature. As a representative, Sims is elected to the state house. The majority leader has the right and power to sanction members for unseemly behavior. Call his or her office and demand that Sims be censured for his behavior. I would, I would tell everyone to do that, but really the state legislature is, in Pennsylvania is only going to listen to Pennsylvanians, just the way politics works. We should always fight back against tyrants and bullies, especially while we still have options to do so that do not involve violence, like what we saw in the first clip. And I am not endorsing violence just for the record. But we, get, but we do need to get used to this kind of behavior coming from our supposed betters in the secular and satanic culture. It's only getting worse from here. Imagine, after seeing this kind of behavior in public, still not believing in demons. How long, Lord?
how long? Thank you for listening and for your support. If you want to support my work, there are options in the description of this video. I ask that people continue to pray and do acts of penance for the liberation and exaltation of the Church. I'm Anthony Stein. Viva Cristo Rey.